Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is McKay Allen. I'm, I'm the Director of uh, Content and Communications at Converza. Formerly logging my calls, thanks for joining us today. We're excited to have uh, a good friend of ours, Fred Valais, on the webinar today talking about his area of expertise, which is AdWords. We'll introduce Fred more fully in a moment. Uh, first, let's get a couple of house cleaning items out of the way and explain to you who we are uh, and why we do these webinars and then also tell you how you can engage on today's webinar with Fred and with myself. So, Converza. Um, we are, as you can see on your screen here, um, a call marketing and optimization platform, the first and only in the world. Um, we do essentially three things. Number one, we do basic call tracking, which allows marketers to track which ads, campaigns, and keywords generate phone calls for their business. So we can marry specific AdWords campaigns, channels, keyword groups, etc., to uh, phone calls, which is obviously increasingly important in the mobile environment. Second thing we do is we actually analyze the calls with speech recognition technology, and we can extract things like a lead score out of every phone call. We can determine whether or not that caller was a good lead or a bad lead. We can tell you whether or not that call resulted in revenue or booked appointment or a reservation, whatever your goal is for that phone call. And then finally, we send our data to third-party SaaS platforms like bid management tools and CRMs that allow you to optimize your marketing on the fly and in real time with our data. So for example, you can increase your bids um, if you get a uh, keyword group that is producing calls that have a lead score above 80 from our system. You can do that automatically. So that's what our system does. Um, so if you are getting or if your clients are getting any volume of phone calls, it's worth taking a look at. Second question we get a lot is why do you do all these webinars? We do two webinars every single week. Um, and the reason we do them is because they're really good content. Um, we've partnered with some of the biggest experts and, and most well-known marketing speakers and, and uh, as I said, experts in their field uh, in the world. And so that's why we do these webinars, is, is to provide useful content to um, our audience, which is marketers. Now you'll notice that we are now Converza. We used to be Log My Calls, if you've heard of that brand. Um, we changed our name to Converza a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then we also just announced that we've received a new round of Series B funding. Um, to help build our system and to help uh, grow our client base as well. So we're excited about that. And uh, thank you to all of you for being here today. A um, couple of quick things about today's webinar. We encourage you to ask questions on today's webinar. You can do that in the little question screen on your uh, GoToWebinar panel there. So to practice this, I want everybody to type in precisely where you are today. So give us a city and state if you're in the U.S. or give us a location if you're outside of the U.S. into the question bar so you know exactly where that is and know how to use it. Um, I'm located in Salt Lake City, Utah, where Converse is headquartered. We also have an office in Southern California, but I'm here in Salt Lake City um, in the Silicon Slopes, as we say. Um, Fred, I know, is in uh, Palo Alto, right in the heart of Silicon Valley, and it looks like we've got people from all over, the, all over the world today, which is great. We've got San Jose, we've got uh, Tampa, Atlanta, Miami, uh, Wisconsin, um, Detroit, Dayton, Minneapolis, New York, Philly, Newark, Chicago, uh, all over the place. That's awesome. L.A., several in L.A., actually. So, good. Thanks for being here, uh, everybody. We really appreciate it, and we thank you for taking time out of your day. Um, this webinar is being recorded. We'll make that recording available to you, and we'll also make Fred's slides available to you after the webinar. Um, and again, please ask questions today. Fred set aside a few minutes at the end for questions. So, with that, I want to introduce a good friend of ours, as I said, Fred Valais. We've done, I think this is the fourth webinar with him over the last uh, 18 months to two years. Um, he always does a great job. Met him for the first time in person at AdTech in San Francisco last month. It's funny, you talk to somebody on the phone so much, you think you've met them, but then you realize you actually haven't met them in person. So it was great to meet Fred. Um, and then uh, Fred, as you know from his uh, bio on the landing page that you signed up on, he was one of the first employees at Google, was on the team that really helped build AdWords, especially the quality score components of AdWords. Um, he's a consultant, sits on the board for many companies. Um, and is right now the CEO of Optimizer based, as I said, in the Silicon Valley. Uh, so, Fred, without further ado, thank you for joining us today, sir. Um, I'll make you the presenter, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, McKay, and thank you, everyone, for attending today. So it's good to be back on another webinar here. So what I wanted to talk about today was the tools that your competitors in AdWords wish you didn't know about. Um, and at the heart of this, what I'm going to talk about mostly is automation and AdWords scripts, one of the coolest things in AdWords that I think far too few people are using. Super powerful feature, so we're going to cover it today and, uh, and give you some ideas on how you could put it into use for your business. Like McKay was saying, 
I was a relatively early employee at Google. I joined it when it was about 400 people. It was back in 2002, and then I left it in 2012 when it had grown to about 40,000 people. And uh, people said, hey, Fred, can you help us manage some AdWords accounts? And I figured, yeah, I should have some skills that enable me to do that. So I started managing accounts. And I found that it was actually kind of time consuming, and, and some of the tasks that I was doing were pretty painful. So I started a company called Optimizer. Um, and Optimizer helps AdWords and Bing Ads advertisers do a lot of stuff more efficiently. There's advanced reporting, there's data insights that will tell you, you know, geographically what's happening, day of the week what's happening. Uh, we have one-click optimizations that will help you find new keywords, set your bids. I do all of these things much more efficiently than if you had to pull the data yourself and, and do a lot of magic in Excel. Uh, we also have enhanced scripts for AdWords, and that's super relevant to what we're talking about today. That's really about how to take AdWords scripts, which are pieces of code, uh, and make those really uh, easy to implement into your accounts. So the agenda that I want to cover here over the next hour, um, and hopefully saving a good amount of time for questions at the end as well, is how to automate. And automation comes to me in three flavors. There's bid management, there's automated rules. Uh, automated rules, by the way, that's a specific feature in AdWords. And then there's AdWords scripts. So that's where you do like JavaScript to, uh, to program stuff. And uh, uh, just a heads up, we are going to talk a little bit about code towards the end there. Uh, hopefully, the eyes won't glaze over. I'll make it uh, accessible enough to everyone, even if you're not a programmer. So the, the reason that I like to talk about automation is that if you're not automating, your employees may one day show up to the office wearing shirts like these. Uh, I know it's kind of a risky shirt to show in a webinar or a, you know, a public event, but these are actual shirts that are handed out at PPC conferences. Uh, it's one of the other tool vendors. It's called Acquizio. They give out these shirts, and so uh, they're really, really popular with PPC people. And the reason I think these shirts are so popular because it's kind of true, right? If, if your job is to do the same thing repetitively, uh, you know, download the same reports, make the same changes in the account on a daily basis, people don't like the repetitive stuff. They get distracted. Uh, if there's a lot of math involved in what they need to do, uh, honestly, a lot of people are just bad at math. Computers are better at that. People, and especially marketers, they want to put their marketing hat on. They want to figure out what's the messaging that we should have, what's the content that we should have. Uh, figuring out the bids and the new keywords to add, that's less fun, so they want to figure out ways to automate that. And computers are really good at that, so it's not a bad thing to automate. Now, uh, one interesting thing that I read in Wired magazine about a year ago was that you have to be really smart about automation. And that makes sense, right? So what the, what the point of the article was, was that if you add human judgment to statistical and automated methods, that will make the results roughly 15% more accurate. And they were specifically talking about forecasting the weather. Uh, the weather could be forecasted 100% off of computer models. But if you have an actual meteorolo meteorologist, difficult word to say right there, but uh, if you have an actual human looking at those computer outputs, then those results become 15% better. Same thing in chess, by the way. Uh, at one point, it was a big deal that a computer could beat a human. But now a computer who's assisted by a human can actually be even better uh, than anyone else. So let's talk about a couple of different levels of automation that you could apply to your AdWords accounts. And so these are the things that if you're using them, this is going to give you an edge over your competitors. Uh, bid automation is an obvious one, right? You can't just go into AdWords, set a bunch of bids, and then forget about the whole thing. That's not going to work well because your competitors are going to react to the bids that you've put in, to the fact that you've come into the auction, and so you're going to have to respond to that as well. Now, when you talk about marketing, uh, and especially about uh, you know display marketing, there's a lot of talk about real-time bidding. Uh, real-time bidding is very cool, but the reality is real-time bidding doesn't actually work in a system like AdWords. When it comes to search marketing, there's no interface that Google provides us as advertisers to make a decision for every single auction that happens. And every single auction, by the way, that's every single time a user does a search. Now, you could imagine that real-time bidding would be very cool in those situations because you know, when we go in today and we set bids for keywords and maybe we set geographic bid modifiers and device bid modifiers, well, there's additional stuff that Google knows about the time that that search happened. 
right? What were the additional words that the user put into the query? What was the actual search term as opposed to the keyword that it matched to? Uh, where is that user physically located? Uh, you know, what, what other things, what other websites have they been to in the past? So there's all of these different signals that Google has access to that would be very interesting to set real-time bids with. Uh, but, uh, but we as advertisers can't do it, so we have to rely to a large degree on Google for real-time bidding because they are the only system that has access to these real-time factors. And that's why when I talk about bid management, you know, I could talk about tools like what Optimizer has, like what some of the others in the space have. Uh, but, but really, in many cases, Google's tools will be some of the best because they are the only one that can do real-time bidding. So let me give you an example of this. Um, and this is something that Google announced at their recent live stream back in May. Um, so they're not quite doing this yet, but this is currently under development. So we're going to have access to this very soon. But imagine there's a string of different queries happening, query A, B, and C, right? And at the end of those queries happening, there's a difference in conversion rate. So if somebody searches for great tech gifts and then highly rated tablet and then Nexus 9 tablet, they have a 3% conversion rate. Whereas on the other hand, if they didn't do that first search for great tech gifts, but they did the, the search B and search C, there was only a 2% conversion rate. So now what Google knows is that there's an absolute delta of 1% in conversion rate. You know, one conversion rate is 50% better than the, uh, than the other. So that is a real-time factor that Google could take into account. And so knowing that history of that cookie, of that user, and knowing that they did this additional search in the past could mean that you probably should bid significantly higher for that click because it is much more likely to convert based on that additional query having happened. Now that's the type of information that Google has access to, but that we as advertisers unfortunately do not. So that leaves us using Google's bid strategies. Uh, now bid strategies are also kind of cool like Google because they have these different bid strategies with different goals, and you can see what they are on the screen right here, but you can apply them variably at different levels of the account. So some bid strategies, you could say, I'm gonna apply these at the campaign level, but then I'm gonna have some different bid strategies applied all the way down to the keyword level. Um, so some of those bid strategies could be a simple one like maximizing clicks. I'm not a huge fan of that one because for most of us, we're not looking for clicks, we're looking for sales or leads. Right? So just getting more clicks is not necessarily meaningful to our business unless they're the right types of clicks. Um, you could target a search page location. So you could say target me to be generally at the top of the search results or target me to at least be on the first page of the results. A uh, stat that I heard is that really only about 5% of people used to go on to the second page of search results. So if you're not on page one, you're probably losing a tremendous amount of opportunity. So Google has tools to make sure you're on page one. You can do target cost per acquisition. Uh, target cost per acquisition, of course, you say what your, your CPA should be, and then Google tries to get you roughly in that uh, neighborhood of CPA. Enhanced CPC is kind of cool because what this one does is you still set your underlying CPC, but Google will fluctuate it up and down automatically based on their real-time expectation of whether that click is likely to lead to a conversion. So it still gives you the control of setting a base level bid, which is based on your business data and what you understand to be the case, but then Google takes all of these additional factors that I showed a couple of slides ago and applies them to it to fluctuate that bid up and down. A target return on ad spend, that's of course a great one if you're doing e-commerce. Uh, in e-commerce, you don't care about cost per acquisition, you care about return on ad spend. So you can say what your return on ad spend should be to make you profitable. And then there's a brand new one that Google introduced, and this one is called Target Outranking Share. Uh, this one is, is kind of uh, interesting because it lets you say, I want to outrank a specific competitor. So uh, for almost every advertiser I talk to who sells something, Amazon is a competitor because uh, they basically sell everything, right? So if you said, hey, I want to put a lot of money behind this and actually start outranking Amazon, that is a bid strategy you can now employ. So you can say Google tried to outrank Amazon um, in, in all the cases that you can. And so those are the bid strategies you have available. Now, uh, last year Google introduced two new ones that they said they were going to have, which is maximize uh, profit and maximize revenue but it's been more than a year and I still haven't heard anything about those, um, so I've taken those off of that slide, but uh, it's conceivable that those two new ones will also be coming at some point. 
Now, <clears throat> what I wanted to show you next was with all of these bid strategies and the fact that you can set them at different levels of the account actually enables some pretty cool stuff. So uh, in the past, I think a lot of people may have thought about bid strategies as let's pick one bid strategy and apply it to everything in my account. Well, that's probably not the right thing to do. Uh, first of all, you generally want to manage your branded keywords differently than your non-brand keywords. right? If you said my cost per acquisition target is $20, and I'm applying that for brand and non-brand keywords, well, there's going to be um, a, a, a you know, the, the brand keywords are by nature going to be much cheaper, so they're going to be supporting the non-brand keywords. So you might actually want to say for my branded keywords, my CPA target is $5. For my non-brand, it's $20. So you're going to get better results that way. So the way that you can implement this into the, into the account is uh, based on SalesX. So that's an agency where I'm on the board. They have what they call the bucket bid method. And so what they do is they bucket all of the keywords, all of the ad groups into different buckets. Um, and so you can see what those filters might be. So they'll find a bunch of keywords that meet the criteria of being high converting. So in the last 30 days, they've had at least five conversions. And then they have a bucket for known converters. So they had some conversions, but not quite as many in the last 30 days. And then there's others that are unknown because they had very few impressions. So they really had no opportunity to lead to a conversion. And in fact, they didn't get any. And so then what you could do is you could say, well, I'm going to apply different bid strategies for each of these different buckets. So for the high converters, I want to be on the top of the page, bid up high. Right? For known converters, I want to be at least on the first page, and maybe I'm going to increment my bid by 50% from that, so that I'm somewhere on the middle of that first page. And then for the unknown ones, maybe the problem is they just haven't been on the first page. So there I might put in a first page bid uh, methodology. So, uh, but, but the point here is you don't necessarily copy exactly these rules, but you can mix and match the rules in your whole account to really start meeting your goals. So that's how you can do bid management. Now, uh, one of the things that Google also introduced, and uh, you know, for those of you who missed that live stream, I wanted to call this out, but Google has uh, a great bid simulator but that has only worked for CPC bidding. Now they're actually going to do this for bid strategies. Uh, and this is nice because now if you say have a target cost per acquisition bid strategy, you're going to be able to put in different target CPAs and Google will give you a prediction of how many conversions you might get, how, many, uh, how much conversion value you'll get, what the cost will be. So you'll be able to, to figure this out before you actually set your bids for those auctions. So that's going to come soon. Now, the, uh, the other thing that you get with this sort of a table, you know, the one that I showed you here with the, the simulator, is you can calculate some interesting additional metrics. And one of these is called incremental cost per conversion. Um, now, l l let me give you a little backstory, right? So say that you're selling bananas. Kind of a random story maybe, but you're selling bananas and you sell them for a dollar a piece. Now, your supplier comes to you and says, I'm going to sell you pallets of bananas. Um, for an average cost of 83 cents each. I'm going to sell you three pallets. Well, you're going to buy all those three pallets because the average cost is lower than what you sell them for, so you make a profit. But now all of a sudden, there's a shortage of banana. And your supplier comes to you and says, well, for each pallet of 1,000, for the, the first one, I'm going to charge you 500 bucks. The, uh, the second one, I'm going to charge you $800. And the last one, because it's the last one I have, I'm going to charge it really high, right? Because there's a scarcity, so I'm going to charge 1,200 bucks for that. So what happens in this case is now you have to make a decision. Do you want to buy all of those bananas? They're still, on average, 83 cents each, right? So they're still cheaper than what you sell them for. Or do you actually want to make the decision that you'll buy the first pallet for 500, the second for 800? because those are cheaper than a buck each, but you're going to pass on the third one, which is a buck 20 per banana. Right? That's incremental cost that you have to think about. And that applies in AdWords as well. So what you can do is you can take these bit simulator outputs. They can actually calculate the incremental cost per click to go to that next level. So this is a new column you add. But basically what you do is you, you, you stop looking at the average cost per click, but you look at the incremental cost per click which is easy to calculate. Now what you can say is, depending on my goal, I could do one of two things. You know, If I'm that banana seller and I just want to have maximum growth, I want to be the biggest business that I can, but 
potentially give up a little bit of profit, well, then I'm going to buy all three pallets of bananas because they're cheaper than the average. However, if I want to maximize my profit and I don't necessarily want to have the highest revenue, then I will stop buying after the incremental cost of the bananas becomes more expensive. The same thing applies in AdWords. Right? So this is a concept not too many people think about, but it's actually relatively easy to pull the data from what AdWords makes available to you. And so you can make smarter bid decisions based on understanding what the incremental cost per conversion would be for you. So um, there's also um, a great blog post that explains this further. It's the RKG blog. Um, and uh, Hal Varian, Google's chief economist, also has a great video explaining this concept. Um, so do take a look at that if this uh, seems interesting to you. Now another thing that Google introduced um, at that live stream is bid strategy dashboards. And this is to answer the question, and I actually get this question quite a bit. People say, well, do these Google bid strategies actually work? And my answer is, Yes, in many cases they do, but there are always situations when they don't. Uh, personally, I've seen that around the holidays, for retailers, the bids are not aggressive enough. Google doesn't react quickly enough to Black Friday um, and some of those other uh, shopping holidays. And so what they're now going to do is show you a dashboard that tells you how long it takes for the system to learn from your data and when it thinks that it should be actually bidding at the correct level. So here what you can see on this chart is the red line, that's your target cost per acquisition that you've set, and then the blue line is the average cost per acquisition that's been achieved. So you can see when Google goes above or beyond what your target is, but they will also explain that during some of those periods they were just learning, right? So they weren't expecting to be very close to your target. There's another bar there that says limited. That basically means Google didn't get enough data on that day during that period. And because they didn't have a lot of data, it was much more difficult for them to set the right level of bids. So if your, if your results are not meeting expectations, you can go to this dashboard and figure out what the potential causes for that may be. Now, whether it's something where Google's just not doing a good job or Google's still learning, so maybe you just need to give it more time or Google doesn't have enough data, and if they don't have enough data, your reaction could be to put more entities in that bid strategy. Right? Keep in mind that you can have a bid strategy down to the keyword level. If you do it for one keyword that doesn't have a lot of data, well, why not put a bunch of other keywords into that same bid strategy? Basically, it makes it a portfolio strategy, and then Google actually has the data to do a good job with that. Now, uh, this is an action item for everyone, so a lot of people who do AdWords kind of missed this. So you can go to conversion tracking in Google, in AdWords, and you can tell Google how they should be counting your conversions. If you're using any of these automated bid strategies, it's really important that Google understands how you count a conversion. Are you lead gen? In which case, you probably only want to count unique leads. right? If I register twice, that should not be two conversions. I'm still the same person. I'm still the same lead that you've generated. However, if you're e-commerce, if me as a person, I make five purchases, well then all five of those purchases should be counted because that's five times more revenue probably. right? So you have a way to tell Google in the conversion setting page whether they count unique conversions or all conversions. Also what they're going to be doing next is allowing you to say how, you, how the optimization and attribution modeling should work. Uh, so attribution modeling is kind of a big question these days in, uh, in the SEM and PPC. And basically it's saying which click should get values. Is it the first click, the last click, all the clicks in between? Um, if it's all the clicks in between, do they have the same weight or is there a time decay factor attached to it? Um, or is it position based, right? So all of these different methodologies, you can choose how Google should do it. By the way, the new one, the first one you see on that list, data driven. That goes back to that example with the three searches, A, B, and C, and the fact that search A had a 1% uh, improvement versus only having seen searches B and C. So that's where Google actually looks very deeply into that data, and I think that's going to be a very cool one to, uh, to start using. Now, a word of caution about bid management. So I've definitely seen companies really muck up their accounts because they figured, let's put a, this whole thing on automation, and then let's go away from it. Um, so there was a company, they had great bid management tools in place, but their landing page one day was broken. So obviously when the landing page is broken, conversions stop happening. 
the bid management system correctly identified a decline in conversions and it started decreasing the bid. So the bid went so low that it went to the page to page two of results. Now they fixed the landing page, but they forgot to look at the bid management system. And so the bid management system with this keyword lingering on page two never figured out that the issue was fixed. And so it just didn't get enough data to ever get back to page one. And this happened to be one of their biggest keywords. So, uh, so the cautionary statement here is make sure you have a human periodically checking what the system is doing because if you become a slave to automation, results may not exactly be what you expect them to be. So that's bid management and we can take questions about that at the end if anyone has any. So let me talk about the next level of automation and uh, the next tool that your competitors probably wish you were not using because it's going to make you much more efficient. And this is automated rules. So automated rules are these uh, little rules that you can set directly in the AdWords interface. You can do this at the ad text level, keyword level, campaign level, all the different levels. So there's a button right there in the interface that says automate. When you click on that button, it shows you all the different options that you have for doing automations for something. And so let me give you a specific example back to bid management. So say that you wanted to bid to an average position. Uh, remember how I said Google has a positional bid strategy, but that strategy really only allows you to bid to the first page or the top of the page. There's no bid strategy that they have that says, I want to average, uh, you know, be in position between one and three. So if you wanted to build that rule, you could do it. So you could say, okay, for the selected keywords, if my position is less than three, right, so and, and the position is kind of a tricky thing, so that means that if your position is a number greater than three, say four or five, then increase my bid by 10%. Um, and you have a counteracting rule which, which says that if your position is greater than two, so say your position is one, then decrease my bid by 10%. So by doing these bid raises and declines, you're going to generally keep your position somewhere between two and three. And you can use an automated rule to do this. Um, you could also use a script, you could use the API, but kind of the nice thing about automated rules is that they're some of the easiest ones to run. Now, a big downside of automated rules is that you can only run these once per day, uh, whereas a script you can run once per hour. So with an automated rule, you have to say, I'm going to look back at the data from yesterday. And if yesterday my position was you know, greater than uh, three or less than two, then I'm going to take action on it. But you couldn't do this on an hourly basis. But it's a quick way to do it if you're happy uh, with just an, uh, a daily automation. So that's a very simple bid automation. But if you wanted to do something much more sophisticated, um, here's sort of um, a map that one of my friends was making. Um, uh, this is Mike Rhodes, who wrote one of the books on AdWords. His company is ppcsavvy.com. And uh, so him and I were talking about this, and we were trying to figure out, well, how do you lay stuff out into uh, mutually exclusive buckets so that for every condition, you could have a different bid management response? And so it could look something like this. And so I highly recommend that if you set up these automations, you really map it out before you start building the rules because as you can see here, it does get pretty complicated in terms of uh, for which conditions do I want to take certain actions. Um, really think that through, make sure you've got it mutually exclusive, you understand what you're going to do. And then of course, taking this and putting it into the AdWords system, that's the easy part, right? So now it's just a matter of going to the interface and coding in these rules. So some, uh, some other things you can certainly do with automated rules is run a specific set of ads every weekend. Uh, this was one where I made sort of a mistake and I, uh, I'm an engineer, so I get really excited whenever I think I can code something up and then make it more efficient. And so I wrote uh, an AdWords script which took me probably two or three days to, uh, to come up with the script that would have different ads on the weekend. And then when I was done with it, I realized I could have done the same thing in 10 minutes using an automated rule. Um, so some of these things that may seem really complicated, pretty easy to do with an automated rule and it doesn't take much time. Another one is uh, pausing keywords that have a quality score that's less than three. Right? So if you don't want to muck up your account level quality score, that might be a good one to automatically clean up bad keywords. Or then if you know that you never want to spend more than 50 bucks for a keyword with no conversions, uh, but rather than just automatically pausing them, you want to get a notification, you can email yourself through an automated rule as well. 
So, uh, so many capabilities there, and these are just some thoughts on what you could do. Now, very cool new feature that's been out for just about a week, I think. Uh, so Google updated their My Client Center, their MCC interface, and now if you're managing multiple accounts, you can actually uh, codify the automated rules at the MCC level. So you can do it across multiple accounts from a single place. <clears throat> this is going to be a huge, huge time saver if you're managing multiple accounts. All right, let's talk about AdWords scripts. This is my favorite. So these are advanced AdWords automations. Um, not quite as advanced as API, but unlike API, an AdWords script is a relatively simple piece of JavaScript code that you can copy and paste into the Google AdWords interface and then schedule it from there. And so some of the nice things about that is you do not have to have a server. You don't have to worry about hosting. You don't have to understand what a cron job is. You can simply take a piece of code, potentially something that somebody else has already written, you can copy and paste it directly into your AdWords account, and you can have a little um, as a graphical user interface where you can say, run this script automatically every single hour or every Monday at 6 a.m. So you build the schedule right there, and then you walk away from it, and then AdWords is handling it for you. So really, really easy way to start experimenting with very sophisticated automations. Now, this is the part where we do get into the code, right? So AdWords scripts are code-based. This is a version of this, a flavor of JavaScript. It's called Google App Scripts. Um, not that difficult to understand if you know a little bit of coding. Uh, you, most people can generally read through this, this code and understand what the script is going to be doing. They also have a really nice developer interface so that if you start typing in here, they will automatically suggest what you might want to type next. So say that you've selected a campaign, they will automatically suggest that maybe you want to access all of the ad groups below that campaign. So they make that really, really easy. It's a very nice interface that they have. Now, one of the benefits that I like to call out about AdWords scripts is that they can talk with your data. And this is a biggie, right? So if you have a database of all your products, or you have a list of all of your special promotions. Uh, maybe that sits in a Google spreadsheet. Uh, maybe your business data exists on your database. Google can actually connect to that through either an API that can connect to your private company data, so long as you give it the credentials, or you can connect to public data. So if you wanted to access weather data, what's the temperature, is it raining? Uh, Google has a really cool bid by weather script classic example of that is say that you have an ice cream shop, but you also sell cappuccinos. Well, on a rainy day, maybe rather than showing an ad for ice cream, show them an ad about the great cappuccinos that you make. So you could automatically switch those ads depending on what the temperature is. Uh, with movie data, you could automatically make new ads, new keywords, whenever a new movie trailer is posted on, a, on some website. Or you can connect through, uh, through Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Drive, or Google Spreadsheet. So all of these you can uh, use to put data in and take data out. So let me give you a couple of ideas to hopefully get you excited, uh, as excited as I am about scripts. <clears throat> so this is a relatively new one. Google introduced these advanced uh, integrations for scripts. And one of them is using AdWords script plus Google Calendar. Now, here's a calendar. This is a standard one. It's holidays in the United States. This is one that any one of us can access today. Or I could make a private calendar with you know, my friend's birthdays if I wanted to advertise around my friend's birthday. But what the, the system, the script does is every day it checks the calendar and it says, is there a holiday today? If there's a holiday, replace the headline of my ad with the name of that holiday. So here on February 14th, it says Valentine's Day sale. And then a couple of days later, when it's President's Day, the script automatically runs again on a daily basis. So on the 16th, it changes the ad to President's Day sale. And then, of course, on the 17th, the script runs again, and it sees, oh, there's no holiday today. So it goes back to the default headline that you would normally have. So this is a very easy way to automate your ad text. You can even automate your bids or your budgets around certain dates on the calendar. And the reason I think this is beautiful, by the way, is that now if you have a team that handles promotions for you, you don't necessarily want to give them access to AdWords because there's so many things they could mess up if they're not an AdWords expert. But if you tell them, well, here's a Google Calendar, whenever you have a promotion, just put the title of that promotion on the right day, and then that automatically connects to AdWords, 
it's, it's almost a foolproof way to give a separate team access to do something in AdWords without giving them full access. So, uh, so that's one automation you could do. Now, uh, another thing that I know I do quite a bit of, but that's uh, auditing AdWords accounts. And so a typical audit might be look at how many URLs are broken, how many ad groups don't have at least two ad texts running, which ad groups have more than 30 keywords and maybe should be split up a little bit further. Well, all of this you can automate it. So you can have these little scripts that look at all of these situations and then whenever it finds an issue rather than just sending me an email, it can actually put a Google task in. And that Google task, I could assign it to myself, but I could just as, e as easily assign it to someone on my team. Right? So now I could say, okay, well, the, the person on my team who's in charge of ad text is, uh, is Johnny. So whenever I find something that's related to ad text, I'm going to assign it to Johnny, and it's going to go in his to-do list. And rather than him getting an email and maybe forgetting about that email, now it's actually on a checklist that he has to go through. So you can integrate scripts with Google Tasks, automatically push new tasks into uh, the Google Task Manager. This is the same example that I gave you before as far as bid management. So uh, again, but you can, you can codify this whole thing using an AdWords script. So you could have used an automated rule if you want to do something a little bit more sophisticated or run it on an hourly basis, simply build this into uh, an AdWords script for bid management. Now this is a, a script that we have. It's one of our most popular ones. And this one maintains an entire campaign from a bunch of data that exists on a Google spreadsheet. And so again, this is, this is one of our scripts, but this is something that any one of you could go out and build, or uh, if anyone needs an introduction to a developer, I'm happy to make those for you. Um, and then that person can do really custom work for you. But uh, the, the idea here is, let's take a spreadsheet with used car inventory, right? Say you're a car dealer, um, you have two options. You get 10 new cars into inventory on a daily basis. Well, do you sit down every evening to make ads and keywords for those 10 new items in inventory? Or do you have an automated system that just looks at a Google spreadsheet? So when those 10 cars come into inventory, just put 10 new lines into that spreadsheet and then let the script handle it for you, right? In the script, you would have told it what is the template for the ad group. Right, should we make an ad group for every brand of car, every model of car, or do we make individual ad groups for each unique VIN number that we have? It's your choice. Right? So you've templatized that and you templatize the keywords based on all the data in that spreadsheet by putting together, for example, the model and the color of the car. Maybe that becomes a keyword. And then the same thing for the ad. So you put in uh, really customized templates to, to construct the ad based on the data from that spreadsheet. And now on the hour, this AdWords script runs, figures out, okay, these are the new cars that just became available, so let me go and make new ads, new keywords for these. If one of these cars gets sold, the salesperson just goes to the Google spreadsheet, deletes the row from the spreadsheet, and when the, within the hour, the keywords and the ads for that specific car are gonna be removed from AdWords. So you're not gonna be spending a lot of money paying for these keywords when you no longer have the inventory available. Right, so car dealers is, a, is an easy example, but this has applications in many, many businesses. Now, the, the other thing to do, and a lot of people already do, is A-B testing for ads. Uh, so this is an AdWords script that's available on freeadwordscripts.com. Uh, that's a resource I have in a couple of slides, so you don't have to write it down, but um, basically it's saying, with some statistical significance, let's figure out which is the best performing ad for each ad group. And so then it can apply labels like this is a loser with 95% confidence. So this is nice because now you run the script, say, on a daily basis. As soon as there's enough data for a specific ad text, the label gets applied. And then you come in or someone on your team comes in and just filters your AdWords account for that label. You review your losers, and if you, if you think that that makes sense, you go ahead and pause those or you delete them, and you make new ads to start up new challengers so that you're always doing ad text testing. Uh, now, one personal note on ad text testing, uh, you can, in fact, do it too much. If you find that you do three experiments in a row and every time the experiment is losing, right, so the new variations that you put in are losing, you're basically killing yourself on CTR. You're basically giving yourself fewer leads than if you just stuck with the ad text that was already working, right? So if you find you can't come up with a new winning ad text, 
take a step back and figure out is it, you know, the whole messaging is off, should I have somebody else maybe take a look at this, but don't keep testing because it can in fact cause you to lose volume, um, so keep that in mind. Now, scripts are also really good for reporting aggregation, right? So say that you wanted to understand what is the benefit of having different match types in AdWords. Well, a very easy script to run is tell me my stats by different match types. Uh, we even have a script that tells you performance by the length of the keyword, how many words are in the keyword term. So if you were wondering, should I really focus on having seven word keywords, uh, our script will tell you. It will tell you that maybe there's a huge drop off after six keywords in length, but maybe the conversion rate's really good. So now you have the data and you make your own decision based on that. Uh, another one that people really like and, and that's very useful is an ad template performance report. So it's answering the question of what is the best text for description line one or description line two. Um, I've seen accounts with 80,000 ads, but to use only 20 different variations of description line two. So rather than waiting for each individual ad group to get enough data to make a decision which is the best one, why not look at aggregate data and say across my whole account, what is the best performance for description line two? Uh, or you just look at the branded campaign and figure out best version for description line two. And so with that data, with that report, now you can take this and you can apply it to all of your other ad groups or you can delete the ones that are underperforming. So uh, that's uh, a couple of ideas about scripts. So the, the next thing about scripts is that they have flexible outputs. So there's really no limits on, in terms of what you can do. So one example here is you can use a script and send the output into Google Drive. In Google Drive, of course, you can sync that up with your own computer. So imagine you're going on a flight and for some reason it doesn't have Wi-Fi on it. If you had the script running on a daily basis, putting the latest files onto your Google Drive, you would actually have the Excel or the Google Sheets with the data right there on your computer as you need them. You can also send your results out to email. Right, so I could send myself a quality score report that tells me my account quality score is 7.33. Uh, very easy to do email. You can also put stuff in Google Spreadsheets. And of course, if you put it in Google Spreadsheets, then you can put charting on top of it. Um, so those are a couple of the outputs. So let me talk briefly now about how to run a script in your account. So uh, I recommend you do copy and paste. So here are a couple of sources for AdWords scripts. Uh, these slides will be available to you afterwards and we'll also have a recording, um, but uh, quickly write down those links there or do a, a quick screenshot here if you want to remember these. So anyway, you find a script that you like and then you go to AdWords and you put in the script in there. So either you either go to the account where you want to put it in or you can run a script at the MCC level as well. But if you do the MCC version, you have to make sure that the script was specifically written with MCC capabilities. It's a little bit different. And then you find a section that says campaigns, bulk operations, and scripts. Okay, then you get this box here and you just delete whatever code is in there and then copy and paste in the code that you just got from one of those four websites or some other one that you found on that first slide. Then you have to authorize it and authorization just says Google has access to make changes in your account, maybe access your Gmail, uh, whatever services you're gonna be using. You authorize it and then really important, preview the script. Uh, do not run the script live because scripts can actually make changes to your account. They could literally delete your whole account. So what you want to do is preview it and take a look at the, the changes that would have been made had you run it live. If the changes look okay, there's nothing sketchy about it, then go ahead and actually execute the script and put it on a schedule. Now, the real power of scripts, of course, is that you can customize them. They don't just have to do what somebody else built them to do, but you can customize it. So here's the script that Google has written. This one is just an account summary report. But if you look at that, notice that there's no conversion metrics in this, right? So that's kind of useless to many advertisers who care about conversions. Um, so do we have to rewrite a whole script from scratch? Well, no, the good news is you can just copy the code from AdWords put it into your account, and then you identify the two sections in that code where it's dealing with the metrics. So the metrics that you see on the spreadsheet cost, CPC, CTR, you can scan for those sections on the page and then simply add whatever metric you wanted to make available. Um, so, I mean, from that first section, you can sort of figure out you probably want to add a comma, row, and then the name of the, 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 the element that you want to add. 
in that second section, it seems to be just a comma separated list of all the metrics. So let's just add one comma in the name of the metric that we want to put on there. So, uh, so very easy changes. Um, you know, you're going to preview this anyway, so if you're not sure you did it right, don't worry about it, just preview it. And if you broke it, it'll probably tell you where you made the error. Uh, so anyway, you preview it, and then, uh, and then the whole thing will run, and now you will generate that same output, the same spreadsheet, but now it's going to have converted click data or conversion data as well. So, uh, so these things don't have to be scary. You can just copy and paste them. You can start making small tweaks, and then as you get more confident as far as how scripts are run, you can really start to customize it uh, to, to a huge degree and make it do exactly what you want it to do. Um, and then if you don't want to deal with code, we do have uh, a form-based version of AdWords scripts as well in Optimizer. So those are three of the automations that I think are really, really key if you want to stay ahead of your competitors in AdWords. Um, and I'd love to take any questions that people may have had. Awesome, Fred. Thank you for the webinar. That was great. Very good. We've got a ton of questions here. So let's um, get through as many as we can in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, all right. So the first question a lot of people are asking, first and foremost, is, is that has this been recorded? And yes, it has been. We'll make that recording available to you. We'll send it to you via email tomorrow. So you'll have that as well. Um, okay. So we have someone who says, let's start with Susan. She says, I've got an AdWords account. I've had it for a long time, about 10 years. I'd like to basically start over all my campaigns. Will this hurt my scores? I assume she means quality scores. What, what's the thought on that if you delete a bunch of stuff within your current campaign? Is it going to hurt you? Yeah, so that's a, that's a pretty complex question, Susan, but it's a good one. So Google saves uh, basically all the information. So if you're going to be rebuilding your whole accounts, but you're still going to be using the same visible URL. Google knows a lot about the performance of that visible URL. Um, Google obviously also has a lot of account history from how that account has historically done. Um, typically when people come and they say, I want to rebuild my account from scratch, it's because they either understand they have bad account level quality score and they want to get away from that. So in that case, go ahead and start up a new account as opposed to use the same account. Um, and build it up slowly, build it up methodically. So figure out what were the, the components of my old account that had a good quality score, and maybe start off by putting those into the new account. So that Google starts up, you know, it's still going to have some historical reference to how that the domain was doing in the other account, right? So that's going to set you a base level that may be a little bit lower than what you were expecting. But at the very least, now you're showing to Google about the, the, the stuff that I've ported over actually does work quite well from a quality score perspective. And so Google's notion of your quality score will be better. And then you can start going into some of the keywords that maybe were problematic in the past, right? Uh, obviously, don't just copy them over with the same ad text because Google's going to know, oh, um, fundamentally, Google looks at the combination of the keyword to the ad text. If that same combination appears somewhere else, they already know what the quality score is going to be. It's not going to reset it. Right? So, but if you're actually changing the ad text or changing some of the keywords, then go ahead and add those uh, potentially lower performing ones in a little bit later after that new account or that new structure has had some time to build up credibility with Google. Um, so that, that's kind of the short answer to a pretty complex question. Those are the best kind of answers, I, th I think. Um, okay, uh, Bob says, I don't know anything about JavaScript coding. Is there a source to get the JavaScript, Java code scripts? And um, with examples, does it have examples with what to substitute to make your own rules? Um, so is there any place where you can get those scripts, Fred? Yeah, so I would refer you to the website freeadwordscripts.com. So that was one of the ones. So I'll put back up this slide. <coughs> This slide right here. So go to freeadwordscripts.com, and not only does uh, Russ Savage, who runs that, not only does he have fully built scripts, but he also does quite a bit of education on just the concept of JavaScript and app script. Um, so by looking at some of his posts, you may start to understand what to substitute. Now, as far as like um, almost a paint by color type, substitute here, substitute there. A lot of the scripts that people have written, they will tell you what line to go to to make the substitution. Um, 
and that that's sort of the the most sophisticated level that I've seen this done at, or the easiest to use for uh, for folks like you. Okay. Um, okay, Brandon asked a question. He says, uh, first of all, compliments. He said, Fred, ex excellent info as always. So that's good. Um, and then he says, say I manage dozens of AdWords accounts for dozens of business owners who are professional dog trainers. Is it possible to use a single negative keyword list, perhaps a spreadsheet, spread across all these accounts? For example, if I want to add dog training collars as a negative keyword, is there any way to do it without manually updating my dozens of accounts? Thanks. Yes. Um, actually, I love that script, and I've been wanting to build it for a really long time. It's not that complicated, actually. And so what you would do, uh, like you suggest, Brendan, is maintain that one Google spreadsheet with the list of negative keyword terms. And then the script would look at that list on a daily basis and simply add each of the words it finds to the shared negative keyword list. Um, and actually, negative, shared negative lists don't quite work yet, so you'd have to put it into the negative list for each campaign. Um, but yeah, totally doable and a great time saver. Yeah, absolutely. That's a massive time saver if it's done well, if it's done right. Um, Thomas asks, he says, can broad searches be reduced for more relevant results with scripting? So can you actually, can you actually winnow down your broad matches or, you know, directly with, with scripts? Yes, and so there's many approaches that you could take to doing that one. Um, Marcella De Vivo has written a really popular search query <coughs> management script. So her name is Marcella De Vivo, D-E-V-I-V-O. Her company is Griffin, uh, G-R-Y-F-F-I-N. Um, so look up that script, and basically, so it, uh, it has a script that pulls out all the search queries that you've run on and then makes it really easy to make changes to those and have it automatically go back into AdWords. Um, but you could write, a, so depending on the methodology you want to employ, you could fully automate this uh, yourself as well. So you could say if you find a search query with more than, say, 20 clicks, more than $30 in cost and zero conversions, automatically put that in as a negative keyword completely doable in scripts, right? And so that's one basic way of looking at it. Um, or you could do something really sophisticated. So one thing we do at SalesX, or that SalesX does is they, uh, they use the alpha beta methodology for keyword management. So they look at the search query report automatically, and if it finds a keyword, or sorry, a query with a conversion, it automatically adds it as a keyword to the account in a different campaign and it automatically copies over the ad text from the originating ad group. So something that would have taken you dozens of steps to do manually through editor or through the interface, you can now literally just write it up in a script, have that script run once a week, and then you just review the changes that were made and you make sure you're happy with it and that's it. Um, so it goes from taking hours to taking minutes. Awesome. Okay, let's do one more question here. Um, uh, Carlos says, he says, could you tell us how to, uh, could you tell us how to, uh, how you resolve the limit of 30 minutes run script for long time consuming scripts? Does that question make sense to you, Fred? Yeah, definitely. So, um, and Carlos is uh, referring to the fact that scripts have a, a number of limitations. So one of them is they can only execute for up to 30 minutes. After that, Google will shut it down. Um, there's also a limit on the number of entities that a script can touch. So I think it's around 250,000. Uh, they may have increased it, but, uh, but basically that's saying if you have an account with a million keywords, you can only operate on 250,000 keywords in any single iteration of that script. So that, that's where the beauty comes in, that the script can be run once per hour. So if you have those types of situations, the easy way to break it up is to chunk it out by different campaigns. Um, so the first hour I might run for my campaign starting with the letter A, the next hour campaign starting with the letter B, um, or you actually specify which campaign runs in which hour. If you only need to do things once a day, that's a great way to get around it. There are many other optimizations that you can do, um, and this gets a little bit deep into the weeds, but, uh, but basically don't read and write intermittently. Uh, use bulk operations as much as possible, and I've had scripts that I've written go from taking in excess of the 30 minutes to two minutes just by doing some of these optimizations. So um, there are ways to get around it. Great. Well, Fred, thank you, sir. That was awesome as usual. Um, any final thoughts for the uh, 
for the crew on the call here? Well, you know, I think programming is the language of the, uh, the future, and even if you think all of this JavaScript is scary, at the very least, figure out the capabilities of it and figure out how to communicate with a developer by writing some pseudocode. Um, and then you can take some of these things that you have in your heads and, and really get them productionized and then save yourselves a ton of time. And, uh, and that will put you back doing what you love to do at your business and not managing the routine, boring tasks on a daily basis. Great. Great. Well, and Fred, thanks again. We really appreciate it. Um, one final thought today. Um, the, the other thing I would mention with AdWords specifically is most of our clients at this stage are using our tool to track the calls that are specifically generated from AdWords, whether they're in a mobile environment or on a desktop environment. Uh, most of our clients are marrying phone calls to AdWords, and so I strongly recommend that if you're doing any level of AdWords spend whatsoever. So um, thanks again, Fred. Everybody have a wonderful day. Watch for an email from us tomorrow that has the recording as well as Fred's slides. And then tomorrow we're also hosting a webinar um, with uh, the guys at Main Street ROI. They're an agency in Midtown Manhattan called Google Analytics Made Simple. So if you aren't an absolute expert in Google Analytics, specifically Universal Analytics, you should be on that webinar. So uh, thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful day, Fred. Have a great day, and thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.